Good morning. My name is Vinit Leo. Can you say your name for the record, please? Good morning, Vinit. My name is Chadwick Glover. And what is your candidate number, please? My candidate number is two three one one four three four five zero. Thank you. And you are taking this test as a doctor. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Thank you. Can I see your ID, please? Sure. The warm-up questions are not assessed and are a chance for us to get used to each other's voices. We'll just talk for two to three minutes. All right. How will you encourage patients to proactively manage their health and improve their habits? When I encounter an individual whose health is in decline or may be affected in the future by her or his current health choices, I always take the time to explain the relationship between our nutritional and lifestyle choices and overall health. I then describe the more detailed effects of certain habits, such as the potential to develop mouth and gum issues and lung diseases because of smoking or tobacco use. How do you interact positively with support staff? As a physician, I understand that the support staff, such as nurses, CNAs, and administrative professionals, provide essential care to patients and deserve to be treated with my respect as members of the health team. I make sure to get to know the individuals on the support team, so that I can encourage them to provide the best care possible and also to pay attention to their expertise. And the information they get from their interactions with patients. What's the best superfood? Sorry, there isn't one. Forget the latest news on supposedly magical treats like blueberries, chocolate, emu meat, or red wine. Researchers often get their amazing results by isolating a substance in the food, and then injecting it into cells in a petri dish, or administering amounts to rats that far exceed what you could realistically get in your diet. Yes, these foods are healthy, but only as part of an overall sound diet. Don't let the news dismay you; it should be freeing. You don't have to track the latest food craze; just eat right and in sensible portions. What should diabetics do during this COVID-19 pandemic? Diabetics also fall under the vulnerable population, and so they should practice social distancing too. However, since follow-ups with a doctor are crucial in their case. They should try and resort to telemedicine, which is basically a video conferencing facility that many hospitals are offering now. Is it okay to cleanse your body by fasting from time to time? As long as you are in good health, a brief liquid fast or cleanse is fine. But don't expect wonders, other than a sense of personal accomplishment. Perhaps any physiologist will tell you that properly functioning lungs, liver, kidneys. And intestines do a fantastic job of keeping your body free of impurities without the help of fasting. If you do pursue a fast, always make sure to drink enough fluids to avoid dehydration. Great. Thank you very much for sharing that. So let's move on to the role plays now. I'll take the part of the patients or perhaps a relative, and you'll take your professional role. The purpose of the role play is to get evidence of your ability to communicate effectively with patients. Use your ability to fulfill as much of the role play as possible. Do you have any questions? No. You have up to three minutes to prepare the role play. You will start the role play after that time. I'll let you know when three minutes are up. You can ask me if there is anything you are not sure about, and you can make notes on the role play card if you want to. Here's a pencil for making notes. Thank you. You can look at the card during the test, but you must return it to me at the end of the test. Please start preparing now. Thank you. The role play will now last for about five minutes. Don't worry if I stop you when the time is up. Can you start the role play, please? Hi, good morning. I'm Dr. Chadwick Glover. May I know your name, please? Hi, doctor. I'm Morgan Willis. May I know what makes you come here in the clinic, please? I'm here because my daughter insisted me to have a booster its vaccination. So I would like to know about the vaccination. All right. May I know the reason why she insists to take booster its vaccination? 
Yeah, she is pregnant, and she is encouraging me to get the vaccine, as she has heard that some illnesses can be fatal for infants. Okay. May I know your age, please? I'm 55 years old, doctor. Are you on any medications? No, doctor. Okay. First of all, I'll tell you what the Boostrix vaccine is for. Okay. You may please. Boostrix vaccine is a combination of three vaccines used to prevent diphtheria, tetanus, and whooping cough. It stimulates the immune system to act against microorganisms to prevent such infections. All right, doctor. Actually, my daughter is overanxious, and that's why she is insisting on me. I really don't need this vaccination. She might be overanxious, Morgan. However, the Boostrix vaccination will be a very good decision as a preventive measure. But from my childhood onwards, I prefer not to have unnecessary medications and injections. Especially, injection of these three dangerous diseases. Being a doctor, I can understand you, Morgan. Also, I can understand your daughter's concern as well. What sense does it make, doctor? Calm down, Morgan. I can explain it to you. Okay, but why should a healthy and hygienic person like me have to take this vaccination? Kindly be patient to listen to my words, Morgan. I can clarify her concern to you. Sure, you may please. In the first six months of life, babies are at high risk for complications from whooping cough, even if they are healthy. This is because their immune systems are still developing. In fact, babies younger than two months of age only have the antibodies they get from their mother to help protect them. Therefore, it is important to receive vaccination in order to prevent those infections and its spread to the child. All right. I understand that. You should acknowledge that the whooping cough can cause serious and sometimes life-threatening complications in babies. Severe relentless coughing, hypoxic, encephalopathy, that is a type of newborn brain damage caused by oxygen deprivation and limited blood flow and even death. I understand what you are saying, doctor. But I'm out in public very often and don't catch diseases easily. I don't think I'm at any risk of diphtheria or tetanus. Definitely, I agree with you, Morgan. The risks of diphtheria and tetanus are low. But, the vaccine is a three-in-one injection. Oh, God. No. Please. Relax, Morgan. This is a preventive vaccination. And, it won't affect you adversely in any way. Ah. Uh, all right. Morgan, just consider this vaccination as a grandpa's care and safety to your grandchild. Yes, doctor. You are right. I'm glad to hear that, Morgan. Anyway, Morgan, I think you need some time to accept it. I suggest you to return next week for the vaccine. Thank you for your understanding. I'll return next week to have the Boostrix vaccine to protect my daughter's baby from whooping cough, diphtheria, and tetanus. That's great, Morgan. See you next week. Thank you, doctor. Thank you for watching. Please, like this video and encourage us. Subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Kindly comment your suggestions and help us do better.